Good morning, guys. It is Friday, April 12th, 2024. This is Bathro Business. I'm George Yoganov. I am out of coffee, but I still have the news. Uh, so not too much to report on. There is one major story I'm going to get to in just a second. Let's start with banks. Uh, so Chase and Wells Fargo both had fantastic quarters. Uh, so Chase reported $13.42 billion. It's boosted by its acquisition of First Republic last year. Acquisitions usually do that. Uh, they also had an expected net uh, income of $90 billion from last year. So, And then this is, I, sh I, I glazed over the important part, is interest income. So income on deposit accounts. So that's actually pretty powerful. And what's interesting is they said they expect the same for the following year. No change. So if you ask me, that's signaling to the fact that uh, we are not going to get rate cuts anytime soon. Uh, Jamie Dimon did come out talking about how important important it is to get the inflation rates under control. Um, mentioned how the Fed needs to do more, et cetera, et cetera. But not too much else going on there. Wells Fargo uh, revenue up 20.86 billion versus the anticipated 20.2 billion. Uh, and that's pretty much all it is with the banks. Uh, now, student debt. Uh, President Joe Biden is forgiving another $7.4 billion in student debt for another 277,000 American borrowers. Um, this is something that's been progressing over the last, uh, I, I think, year or so. I, I report on this fairly f frequently. They're essentially looking for loopholes in the system in order to forgive as much as possible. Uh, so this is currently the tally is up to 4.3 million Americans have had their debt, student debt forgiven, totaling 153 billion in total aid. That's not a small number, honestly. Uh, I was surprised that it was that high already. 4.3 million Americans is a lot. Um, Meta and Google are straying from NVIDIA. So this is actually kind of major news because Meta and Google have been developing their own AI chips uh, in association with TSMC. Really nothing happens without TSMC in this industry. And they are going to be building their own AI chips. They already are launching their own AI chips. So a lot more is going to be happening in-house. I don't think this is going to go into the greater market. I don't think they're going to sell into the market themselves. I think this is for internal use, but I could be wrong. Um, so we'll see how this plays out, but this does directly play into NVIDIA's projected profits. Um, now, there is still a, glut, uh, a deficit of AI chips, so this is going to fulfill a need within the market. But even a couple of days ago, I uh, talked about how Intel has gotten into the game and will have their AI chips available by third quarter of this year. So this gives you an idea of how quickly it can be fulfilled and you can quickly enter a scenario where AIs are being overproduced and reach a deflationary cycle. Um, I don't know if we're there yet. I don't think anyone does, but this is the first glimmer of the fact that we could be moving in that direction. Okay, let's talk about gold. My favorite subject and everybody's least favorite subject. So I just wanna report the gold price right now. It is above 2,400. It is at 2422. This is record breaking again. Gold has been on a tear for months now and it keeps increasing. Now, this isn't too surprising seeing as how we keep getting higher and higher inflation numbers, but I cannot stress the fact of how bad this is. When gold is on a kick like this, it is bad for the economy. It means something bad is coming or something bad is going to come. So, just to give you context if you haven't turned tuned into my channel before. I am not one of those buy gold, save yourself from the coming crisis guys. I just know gold. The reason I know gold is one of our companies is a dental laboratory. So I have been in the laboratory, dental lab field since I've been in like my whole life. It's a family owned business. I took over from my dad's uh, where she's still co-partners in it. I have been doing this job since the age of 12. Uh, it is one of the businesses we own, but it is one of the key component businesses we own. And gold is something we always watch. Gold, palladium, and platinum are numbers we always watch because they were components in our manufacturing process. Now, the industry has changed vastly. We have moved to using more acrylics, porcelains, etc. cetera. Uh, alloys are just a small fraction of our business. However, because alloy prices fluctuate so much, the 1% or 2% of our products that we sell that do have these components, we still pay pretty close attention to these pardon me, to these numbers, because we have to, because the prices fluctuate so much day to day. So if up in this brain, I have a history of about 25 years of gold prices, because I have had to watch those gold prices for 25 years. And gold does not normally do this. This is bad. So traditionally, traditionally, if gold is above $2,000, 
we are in crisis mode. That up until just a couple months ago had only happened two times. Once was the result of the 2008 collapse, and the other was right after lockdown, in the middle of COVID lockdown. Outside of that, gold doesn't peak above $2,000. So the fact that it's at 2400 and I've been reporting this steady climb as it's moved from the 1800 to $2,400 uh, stage on a, a monthly basis is really bad. It means that there is underlying weakness in the economy. Now, that doesn't mean that the economy is going to pop tomorrow. So during the early 2000s, gold went from about $300 to about $1,300, somewhere in that range. You can double check, just look at the uh, charts, uh, double check my facts. But they went from about $300 to about $1,300 an ounce in the span of several years. So this started around uh, 9-11 and then stopped around 2007, 2008, where all of a sudden we had a financial crisis and gold started climbing and skyrocketing. But in that scenario, Gold was giving us prognosis that something wrong was happening in the economy for about four or five years before everything finally broke and it headed to the moon. So the fact that gold is going up makes me think that this is one of those cycles, again, that we are in a bad economy that is edging towards a crisis. Now, I, if you watch my channel, I'm actually one of those guys that says the economy is doing good. But this is the only indicator I can see that forewarns of clouds on the horizon. Now, those clouds could be two months away. They could be another five years away. I don't know. But it's something to watch because if gold is continuing to creep up, it is a sign of something. Remember, gold is a reserve. For Even if you are a crypto maximalist, gold is still a standard and it's something you need to look at. And gold probably would be higher had it not been for crypto because a lot of uh, when the ETFs came out for crypto or when they were being predicted to come out, a lot of people liquidated their gold ETFs in order to move into crypto. So the gold price would actually normally be higher. Now, another thing to consider with gold, if you adjust for inflation, it hasn't actually hit its all time high. Uh, if you adjust for inflation, I believe the all time high was in 1981 where gold had hit uh, about 2,600. Now, uh, the nominal price wasn't 2,600. It was about 810, 820. Um, you'll have to go back and double check the, the numbers on the charts. But uh, it hit about 800 something. But if you adjust it for inflation, that would be the $2,600 price. So it's edging closer to that. Now, even got, um, gold maximalists like Peter Schiff will say that that $800 mark was the result of a decade of high inflation from the 70s and it was probably already a gold bubble at that point so that 2600 was an inflated number whereas right now i don't think we've gotten to a point where gold is in a bubble yet it could happen but i think given the fact that we're still seeing inflation and that underlying inflation is probably higher than what they're reporting because they did actually change the standard of how they calculate inflation from the 80s to today that number has been changed multiple times I think gold still has a long way to go. Um, so uh, I, I can't remember the bank that reported it, but they are predicting a $3,000 gold price by the end of the year. If that does happen, which I actually think is very plausible, uh, that will be an all-time record high for gold by every standard, by nominal price and by inflation-adjusted price. Another sign that gold is going to keep growing is Costco began selling gold bars um, last year. I don't think I reported on it, but I remember reading it. So in the third quarter of 2023, they sold about $100 million in gold. Currently, they are selling $200 million a month. So they are doing double per month what they did in a quarter last year. So it's, it's accelerating. More people are buying gold, and this is in addition to central banks, right? China is buying more gold. Individuals in China are buying more gold. And what's interesting is China used to be the biggest buyer of U.S. debt. Now, I haven't checked what they're doing with the U.S. debt right now, but currently they're investing heavily in gold, and that's something that we need to watch because that means that they're not seeing stability in the U.S. market. They're seeing more stability in gold. Now, there is some politics to play that are at play there, but geopolitics aside, money is money, and if you're going to make a good return on gold, you're going to invest in it. So this is something we need to watch. Keep your eye on it uh, because I think it's going to be the biggest prognosis. Again, 
we don't know what's going to happen. We don't know if this is going to be just the beginning of the rise in gold and this is going to continue for another two, three, four years, or if this means that we are going to see a crisis here before the end of the year, but it's definitely a signal and something you need to be watching. That's pretty much it. Um, yeah, I'm going to probably head off to work. Uh, I don't have too much to report. Now, uh, for those that watch my channel regularly, you might be asking, well, um, you made an acquisition earlier this month. You have a new business. Tell us about it. What's changed? I haven't really reported much about it simply because it's been pretty mundane day-to-day -day activity so far. I will give you guys an update um, probably in about a month, which is going to be the 25th, I believe, is the 25th of April is going to be the one month mark of our acquisition. So I will give you a, a comprehensive update of what's going on with the business at that point. I just haven't felt like there's a need to simply because not much has changed currently. Um, that's pretty much it. I actually do have one more thing to report. I'm actually going to be talking to another uh, company today about a possible second acquisition, second in one year. Um, and so I will report on you, uh, how that goes on Monday. So we have a potentially another acquisition we'll do in, uh, maybe the next couple of months. So I'll keep you guys posted on that. Uh, I hope you have a productive Friday. I'll see you all Monday. Have a great weekend.